In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 8. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him in the chariot. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. I think we would all agree that numbers can be deceiving. Many times you can spin them to work to your advantage. The person in retail knows that no one is going to spend $50 for a product, so they sell it for $49.99. What a deal. What about one soul? The world's population is estimated to be 7.4 billion. How does one soul show up when you chart it against so many people? Would it even register on such a graph? Maybe not. But the Bible tells us how one soul registered in God's perspective. From the Lord's point of view, there's not enough money in the world to pay for even one soul. How important does that make your soul? How important does that make your neighbor's soul? With the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts through the account of Philip and the Ethiopian in our devotion, let's reflect on the importance of one eternal soul. Philip, an evangelist in the early Christian church, received a mission call to serve one person. As he occasionally did before all the scriptures were recorded, God spoke directly to his people, his workers, in this case Philip, telling him to go south toward Gaza. Unbeknown to Philip, there would be an Ethiopian official out on that deserted desert road. There would be a copy of an Isaiah scroll, and there would be some water. By God's grace alone, this Ethiopian official would be brought to trust in Jesus and have his sins washed away through baptism. That one soul of that one Ethiopian official was extremely important to the one true God. So God chose to use Philip as his instrument to bring the Ethiopian into his family of believers. Today, the scripture still tells us to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Jesus spoke the Great Commission not only to world missionaries, but to Christians of every vocation. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The Spirit may not have spoken to you directly, but he does speak to you through his word to witness for Christ. If you haven't come across a person with their Bible open asking you for an explanation, you've been in a conversation that turned religious. Why do I have a feeling that you know somebody who does not have the same love and respect and knowledge of Scripture and the Savior as you have? Maybe a family member who hasn't been in church for a while and seems to be straying from the Word. Praise God that he hasn't lost sight of the importance of one eternal soul, yours, of the billions whom he equally loves. God didn't pass you by. As a substitute, Jesus lived without sinning in the place of every human being ever conceived, including you. As a substitute, 
Jesus died to pay for every sin ever committed by anyone and everyone, including every sin of yours. Look at the price tag God has placed on your single soul. His dear son, Jesus, was led as a sheep to the slaughter to pay for your pardon. God has purchased your eternal soul to be his forever, and he's given you the faith to believe it. Of all the billions who are equally important to God, your one eternal soul is important to God too. It always will be. The life, death, and resurrection of Christ say so. Ponder the importance of one eternal soul, your neighbors. That one person is important to God. The Son of God left the majesty of heaven and assumed human flesh and blood to live and die for everyone, but also for that one person you're thinking of. God yearns and burns for everyone, but also for that one person to be rescued from hell, to repent, to come to a knowledge of the truth. God wants that person to hear the scriptures explained, to have their sins washed away in baptism, to go on his way through life rejoicing. God's hand reaches out to that one important eternal soul through you. God's hand, right through you to your neighbor. God's voice is sounding in that person's ear, heart, and soul through your voice. God's voice, right through you to your neighbor. God's love is touching that person's heart through the love you show that person. God's love, right through you to your neighbor. When God looks at you, he sees an eternal soul cleansed by the blood of Christ, destined for heaven. When you look at your neighbor, see in your neighbor what God sees in you, an eternal soul, cleansed by the blood of Christ, destined for heaven. Then trust that God's unbounded power will enable you to tell your neighbor the good news that God has shared with you. And we pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize that every soul is important to you, so important that you were willing to sacrifice your son to redeem that soul and every soul. We pray that you would use each and every one of us to reach out with the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to remind people how precious they are and how you have rescued them and promised to give all eternal life. We ask this all in your name. Amen.